In this video, we're going to be covering three different methods of whitening, including over-the-counter options, which consist of strips and or gels mixed with lights. We're also going to be covering in-office whitening methods, which also often involve the use of lights. And the third option, which is my favorite, is custom fitted trays that you're able to use to apply the gel precisely. Strip based whitening products are based on peroxide, which is very effective at whitening your teeth, but they're located on a strip. And what happens is when you place that strip on your teeth, first of all, it doesn't go all the way back to your molars. So sometimes you have the issue of not getting enough coverage. And then the other major option is that you're not always getting in between all the different contours of your teeth. So if you think of this like an analogy of painting a picket fence, it's like you're painting the front surface, but you're not getting the sides. And what happens with a lot of patients is they use the strips and their complaint is that the teeth are dark in between or still stained because the gel was not able to adequately penetrate there. Also, the gel is based on regular hydrogen peroxide, which only has a duration of action for about 30 minutes. So you have to use a higher concentration, but lower duration, which is not my preferred method of whitening. There's a whole other class of whitening products over the counter, which I'm sure you've seen online on social media. And these are those products that involve a loosely fitting tray with the light. And the idea is that the light activates the gel and whitens your teeth more effectively. And the problem is that there's absolutely no science to show that the light does anything. And if you understand peroxide, it is not a light activated material. You don't need to use light. There's no benefit to the light. So these things are really gimmicky. And in numerous studies, what you see is that you get the same result with or without the light because the true active ingredient is the peroxide gel. So my recommendation, stay totally clear from those lights and just be aware that the gel is the active ingredient that's responsible for the whitening. No advantage to using the light. A lot of patients think that in-office whitening is the best gold standard whitening, but unfortunately this isn't true. When a patient asks me for in-office whitening, I always tell them that my recommendation is custom trays. The reason is that in a one hour or half hour session, you can't really achieve that much whitening. And what happens is instead of using a slow, safe method of application, instead we're using a higher concentration to make up for this lack of time. And that results in a lot of sensitivity and unnecessary complication. Plus, honestly, the results from one session aren't significant enough. So you need to do several repeat sessions. So it ends up being too expensive and too costly with added risk that's unnecessary. Also, as I mentioned before, the gel is the active ingredient, not the light. So when someone uses the light, this has been studied and proven that the light makes no difference. In one specific study, they looked at two different groups. One group that got the whitening with the light and the other group with just the whitening gel alone. And what they found was after one week when they retested the shades, both groups had the same results, so the light made no difference. But immediately after the whitening session, the light did make the teeth look a little bit whiter because it dried them out. And when teeth get dry, they look white. So you get a very temporary, less than one week benefit from using the light, but it's not actually performing any permanent, long lasting whitening or change of tooth color. My favorite method of whitening is with custom trays and there's been a wealth of research on this and it's been studied to be safe and effective and it can work so well if you follow the protocol. With these custom trays, you get the benefit that the trays keep the gel on your teeth, they keep saliva off and what happens is you're able to do a lower concentration of gel and make up for it with a longer duration. That's why I always recommend sleeping with these trays overnight using a 10% version of carbamide peroxide. Though for some people you might need to modify that for various reasons and you can do a little bit higher concentration with a little lower treatment time if it's absolutely necessary. But I always prefer to do the overnight approach two nights on, one night off, and you get really good, really long lasting results this way with absolutely no long-term complications reported in the literature. 
Most patients also don't get too sensitive from this, so everybody's different and sometimes you do have some scenarios that you need to compensate for. When making the trays, a very important step on the model, because when we make your whitening trays, we have a stone model of your mouth. And when we make it, what I like to do is take a very sharp instrument and accentuate your gum line so that when the tray is made, it has a little pressure point around each tooth, which makes this seal extra tight. And again, aids in giving us the best results by keeping the gel on your tooth and prevents it from leaking out. So this is one of those tips that if you've tried, you know it's the best way to make the whitening tray. And if you combine all these different things together, you get the best recommended way to make your whitening tray. So if you're not getting the results you like with your whitening trays, just keep in mind that they're not all created equal.